stubborn and rebellious. I want to be one of those Jews that, that I've let him make my life over and make it what he wants it to be because I want to go home with him. Amen. God is making up his Jews and they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my Jews and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Secondly, God is able to keep his Jews. Amen. Say amen. God is able to keep his jewels in the very midst of wickedness. Verse 16, Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. I believe in a personal God. God hears my prayers. And better than that, he answers my prayers. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought. And that thought upon his name. You ever think about the Lord? You ever just think about God's word? Meditate upon the Lord. It'll help you. It'll bless you. You, saw, you see, the Lord is mindful of those who love him. Jezebel killed God's prophets and I'm sure during that period of time when she's in the process of killing God's prophets and persecuting the people of God, many people probably turned around and ran. Many people stopped living for the Lord. Many people quit on the Lord. You know, Elijah said, you know, I alone am left. They've killed all your prophets, and I alone am left. He, he felt so alone. We feel like that sometimes when the devil's attacking us. And it seems like we don't have any help. But my friend, we need to understand something. God doesn't leave us. He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And God said to Elijah, he said, wait a minute. Putting it in my own words. He said, wait a minute, Elijah. There's 7,000 people here that haven't bowed their knee to Baal. You see, Elijah just need to look around a little bit, didn't he? Amen. There were 7,000 folks there that loved the Lord. You know, God loves people that love him. Do you love the Lord tonight? Praise the Lord. Do you love God's word? Praise the Lord. Do you love his work? Praise the Lord. Do you love to do things for him? Do you love, do you love the Spirit? Do you love the Holy Spirit in your heart and do you, that your cup runs over? Do you just like to get blessed of the Lord? Is that where you find your joy and happiness? Just serving the Lord. God loves his people. Often evil seems to be winning. You can just go back and study the Bible and you'll find that Oh, so many times God's people had to fight against evil and it seemed like evil was winning. There's folks like that in the world tonight. Christians in North Korea and other places around the world, Afghanistan and, and Iraq and, and places like that uh, are, are suffering. They're not having it easy. Most of them are not able to be in a church service like we're in tonight. Many of them have, have lost property People just come and take it away from them. Churches have been destroyed. Churches have been burned. Pastors, uh, pastors persecuted and killed. People persecuted and killed just because they met together to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. And nobody cares. In fact, the government often promotes it. I've read stories where, where somebody came in and, and uh, destroyed a church and, uh, and uh, the, the people would go to the police in that country and the police, they would say, yeah, we'll check it out. But they didn't do anything. That would hurt. Back in Rome, Christians were put in with lions and beasts they were burned alive as human candles, imprisoned. The Bible says they roamed the streets in sheepskins. It often seems like the devil's winning, doesn't it? But you know, when the church is the church, it's seldom in the majority. And Christians who really love the Lord shine the brightest 
when they're when they're being tested. Did you know that? You ever tested? You ever grumble and complain when you're tested? You know we need to, we need to understand that when we're when we're tested, that's a time for us to shine for the Lord. That's an opportunity for us to shine and, and to be a witness and a testimony for God. I know it's hard to see it that way. I, I certainly grumbled when I was tested at times. And I'm ashamed of myself when I do. You see, God wants us to be something for him. God wants us to, to, to be a blessing to people around us. God wants us to touch lives. And sometimes he has to put us in kind of strange circumstances to bring the very best out of us. He has to polish us up and he has to shine us up so we can shine for him and be a testimony and witness for him. The Lord is able to keep you, you know that? In John, the 10th chapter, verse 27, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. You know, I don't think it takes a prophet to see that evil is getting worse in America and the world. I, I, I look at people's attitudes about abortion today. More babies are being killed every day. And they say, well, that's not a life. You know, you can't count that as a life. That's just a, that's a fetus. There's scientific proof that that's a life. That child has feelings. And you try to stand up against these things, and, and there's people who will shout you down. All kinds of things. I talked a minute ago. We're accepting things today. Things are, sin is becoming more acceptable to us today. We're allowing things to happen and we're not, we're not opposing things that we used to have stood up, would have stood up against and opposed in this country. Liberalness in, re, in religion and apostasy is increasing. And it seems to me like there's fewer and fewer Christians who want to live a dedicated life and live holy for the Lord. But I really believe this. God's jewels shine most when wickedness seems to be winning. I have a portion of a letter here it was written by a Christian in Russia. For being a Christian, he was imprisoned. And I quote, At midnight I bowed my knee before God and thanked him for all the graces which he has shown us. He said he has forgiven all our sins. He places us on the way of truth. He comforts, comforts us in our misery, in our suffering, and in our separation, unquote. Wow. Here's a guy. I don't know what kind of prison cell he had, but he was in jail because he said, I'm a Christian. But when they put him in jail, he didn't quit. When they put him in jail, he didn't say, I'm not a Christian. When he put him in jail, he didn't grow. He began to praise God for the blessings that God gives. Boy, that's shining. Amen. You see, God's Holy Spirit came to him and blessed him. God's able to keep his people in the midst of wickedness and in the midst of suffering. Praise God. God is making up his jewels tonight. Are you on his side? Boy, I'd hate to be a part of the world. Oh, yeah, you can have fun now. Oh, yeah, you can do what you want to. Oh, yeah, you don't have to be one of those stick-in-the-mud Christians. Oh, yeah, you, can, you don't have to, to go over the Bible, and you don't have to say no to sin. You can do that today. But let me tell you, when Jesus comes and make up his, makes up his jewel, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. I want to be on his side. The last thing is God, God is able to keep his jewels in the very midst of wickedness. Uh, and God is able to keep, uh, to rescue his jewels from the destruction of the wicked. In Malachi, the third chapter, verse 17, And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Oh, I tell you, God has blessings for people. When we, when we submit to his will, you want peace? So many people I talk to, I don't have any peace, preacher. You know why people don't have peace? They're pulling against God. 